we are doing unboxing to print for this brand new machine, Kaivu Tycoon. Uh, so far I'm loving it. And we are on step number six. Uh, we just did a video on test prints and all that. And in this video, we're gonna go over how to tune the E-steps on Kaivu 3D Tycoon using printer face. So that's gonna be fun. So just a quick recap from the last video of the test print decodes. The test prints came out wonderful and there are some really, really fantastic models in here. However, I saw, I noticed really, really slight under extrusion on the Z face, really, really minor. Um, if I zoom in, minor under extrusion, as you can see over there, the layers are not, there's a little bit of a layer gap. So in order to do that, uh, troubleshoot that, we're just gonna do our E steps and figure out if we are under, under extruding a little bit and then tune our E-steps so that we are not under extruding. Okay, for those who don't know what uh, E-steps are, E-steps are the steps per millimeter for the extruder, which is the feeder here. So what it really means is calibrating the E-steps is that if I ask the extruder to extrude 100 millimeters of filament or 10 millimeters of filament, then it actually extrudes 100 millimeters of filament, it doesn't under extrude that is less than 100 millimeters or it doesn't over extrude, which is more than 100 millimeters. So since in uh, one of my test prints, the XYZ cube, I saw that there was slight, super, super minor slight under extrusion on the Z surface. We're gonna go ahead and do uh, the E-steps calibration on Kaivu 3D Tycoon. But the difference here is that since this is a custom UI and it's touchscreen, in most uh, regular Marlin based touch screens, you really have a menu option which is called steps per millimeter or E steps in control menu or something like that, where you can, you know, calibrate your E steps and you can punch in the new E steps number. However, on Kaibu Tycoon, we don't have that option. So we can't manually, at least until you know, I update the firmware and I figured out that there's, I can add some custom buttons to it. Uh, until then, which is gonna be here. Until then, the, the stock firmware does not allow you to enter a new E-steps value using the LCD screen. So there are many ways of, uh, you know, using custom E-steps value, steps per millimeter for the extruder. Uh, one is using the LCD screen. The other is you can, uh, add it to your start G code in Cura or whatever slicer you use. The other is you can actually append that value inside of the firmware when you compile the firmware. I prefer to do it from the machine itself because it gives you a little more flexibility, especially when you're changing filaments and all that, or your you know, extruder gear veers out eventually and you gotta figure that out and you're, you're making adjustments. You're not gonna do this E steps calibration all that very often. You're only gonna go back and review it as part of your troubleshooting steps if you start seeing under extrusion out of nowhere. So because of these reasons, we are gonna use Pronterface to look up what e stock E step value is set up in, in Kaibu 3D Tycoon and update our E steps number, steps per millimeters for the extruder based on uh, our test. Okay, so for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go into the details of how to install Pronerface. Pronerface is just another way of connecting your laptop to your printer so you can control, you can pass on G-code commands from your laptop to the printer. Uh, that's the best use of it. You can do quite a few other things as well. I'm not gonna go into the details of how to get Pronerface and how to install it and how to set it up and all that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna link this really, really uh, good video from Chris at Cursey Fabrications. A really good guy, really smart guy. And this is about 10, 11 minutes long video and you're gonna have a really good idea of what Pronerface is all about, how to install it, how to get it and everything. Uh, so I will link this video in, in the video description. And having said that, I will move on to E-steps calibration on Kaibu Tycoon. So the first step to calibrate E-steps 
on any machine really is <clears throat> to preheat your hot end because you're not going to do cold extrusion. So I'm going to go to tool and this is the same fundamental for any machine, any 3D printer. It's just you're going to see different menu options which are specific to Kaibu Tycoon here. So I'm going to go to preheat and I'm going to say extrusion and I'm going to say add. I'm going to preheat this hot end to 200 degrees. 200 degrees. And we're going to we're going to wait until it reaches temperature. So while it reaches temperature, we're going to take a sharpie and a metal ruler or whatever good ruler that you have. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. You can use digital calipers as well. I have digital calipers. I prefer ruler better. It's just easier to get a better grip. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this filament sensor. You can do it with any machine. Uh, if you have no filament sensor, you, you measure from the point where the filament is actually going in uh, the feeder. But in our case, we have the filament sensor right sitting above our direct drive system. So what you're going to do is you're going to set the ruler like this and you're going to make two marks. One mark at 100 uh, millimeters, which is 10 centimeters and another mark at 120 millimeters, which is 12 centimeters. So let me see if I can show you the two marks I made. Okay, so you can kind of see these two marks, right? The first one, the bottom one is at 100 millimeters from the filament sensor and the other is 120 millimeters, uh, the top one. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is now that our extruder hot end has reached temperature, it says 200 degrees, we're gonna ask our machine to extrude 100 millimeters of filament, okay? Again, guys, this is this procedure is standard across machines, just different ways of doing it. So I'm gonna go to move. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go to extrusion, and I'm gonna say 10 millimeter increments, and I'm gonna go out until the extrusion one here reads 100 millimeters. So one, oops, nope, sorry. Not out, in this case in, out is retraction, in is extrusion. So I'm gonna go 100 millimeters, and then we're gonna watch this guy extrude the filament. As you can see how nice and clean it's falling, right? That's exactly what you're looking for. This is also a test to see if your nozzle is clogged or not. It should fall straight out of the nozzle and it should spiral up at the bottom. That tells you that your nozzle has a clear path and there are no partial obstructions in the filament's extrusion. So we're gonna let this complete. I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna play it once it's done. Okay, looks like it's done. And it seems like we are under extruding a little bit. As you can see here, this is my 100 millimeter mark here. And we measured from this point. And since we have not gone past the 100 millimeter mark, that means when we asked you to extrude 100 millimeters, it extruded less than 100 millimeters. So that means we are under extruding a little bit. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna measure out this distance. And see how much it really extruded when, it, when we asked for 100 millimeters. So it looks like it extruded 95 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so the formula for calculating the E-steps is this. So we get the stock value, which is currently in the machine, right? we multiply it by 100 and we divide it by the measured number that we got just now, which is 95. Uh, at this point, we do not know what the stock value is. So we're going to do this using Pronterface because we don't have that information available in the LCD screen. We're going to get that information using Pronterface. Then we're going to calculate our E-steps. We're going to find our new E-steps number. We're going to send that new E-steps value to the machine using Pronterface. We're going to save that value in the machine using Pronterface. 
and then we're gonna do our same 100 millimeter, 120 millimeter E steps extrusion to see if we are on point or not. Okay, so at this point, you wanna go watch the Cursive Fabrications video and get Proner Face folder downloaded and unzipped in your laptop. And then we're gonna go here and we're gonna launch this application, which is called Proner Face. Okay, and it's gonna look like this. You can do a lot of things with uh, this interface here. That video will explain you a lot, but for now we're just gonna use Proner Face to calibrate our E-steps on Kaibu Tycoon 3D. Now at this point, you're gonna go ahead and take your USB cable, micro USB cable that came with your in your box. And Kaibu, this is the first thing that I don't like. This micro USB cable is super tiny. It is really, really, really small. I, it, I can barely reach the two ends from the top of the micro SD, uh, micro USB connector to my laptop's USB port. So this goes in here, right? Your other end goes in here. And you're gonna hear that the device is gonna get connected. You're gonna hear the ding, ding, ding. And as you can see, this is this cable is not long enough. It's really, really tight squeeze, but we'll make do. I have uh, many others as well, USB cables, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, the one thing that I didn't like so far. Okay, so we are here. And when your machine is connected to your printer, if you see any issues that it's not connected, right? When you, you can go here and you can say connect, it's gonna be using COM3 or COM4 port. Uh, don't change the baud rate. And you're gonna say connect. And, oops. Okay, so I just troubleshooted this real quick. I was on COM4 port, uh, I should have been on COM3 port. So I just hit connect. And then it says connecting, printer is online. And at this point, you can do a lot of these commands. Uh, just watch that video to see how you can use Proner Face for many, many different things. Anyway, if your machine does not get connected, then you go to Device Manager, and you look for the USB serial bus devices uh, and see if there's anything that has a question mark in front of it. On the ports here, sorry. So you see that this CH340 serial is connected on COM3 port. That's what you wanna see. If this shows a question mark, just right click and update the driver uh, or find the drivers online for CH340 channel. And then uh, disconnect and reconnect. So that should sort that out for you. Now, let's get back to E-steps calibration. So when you're here, if you do M503, it's going to give you all the information of your machine settings. What we are looking for here is the E-steps value, which is uh, right here, M92, T0, E92.63. So I'm going to note down this value because this is the stock E-steps number that we were looking for. Okay. So here's our stock value, 92.63 times 100 divided by 95, which is what we measured when we did uh, asked our extruder to extrude 100 millimeters and it, ext it extruded 95. Okay, so when we do the mathematics calculations, it says 92.63 divided by 95. So my new steps per millimeter, millimeters, millimeters value is 97.505, we run it off to 97.50. Okay, so first I'm gonna do M503 again because we wanna reset this new value again. And we still see that M92, E is 92.63 at this point. Our new E steps number is 97.50. So I'm gonna say M92, E, 97.50, and I'm gonna hit send. So it's gonna say send in, and we're gonna do M503 at this point, once that command completes. And this status command should show us the new E-steps value that we just sent it. And as we can see, it's right here. 
the new E steps value is M92 E97.50. Now I want to store this value because what happens is if you don't store this value, when you power down your machine and start it back up again, it's going to forget these uh, this new setting. So I'm going to say M500, which is going to store this new E steps number to my machine, and it says setting stored. I'm going to do M503 again just to be sure. I see it 97.50. So at this point, we have successfully saved our new steps per millimeter to our machine using Proner Face. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna mark our filament uh, the same way we did before we, we changed this value, uh, 100 millimeters and 120 millimeters, and then ask uh, the extrusion to extrude 100 millimeters and see if we are on point. Oh, and by the way, just make sure that you hit disconnect on Proner Face and unplug your USB so we're good to go. So I'm just checking here. I'm still preheated to 200 degrees. I've made my new marks measuring 100 millimeters and 120 millimeters from the top of the filament sensor. All right. And now I'm going to go here in the extrusion menu and I'm going to say in 100. There we go. And we're gonna watch our filament extrude here. Curl up nicely at the bottom. I'm gonna pause it now and wait for this to finish. And there you have it folks. It's done extruding 100 millimeters, right? And we are right on the money. Look at that. So there we go. That's how you calibrate your E-steps on a Kaibu Tycoon 3D or pretty much any other machine. But this time we did it using Toner Face. Now I personally like to repeat this uh, a couple of times just to be sure that there was no error on my part and it is actually consistent. Uh, especially if you're getting inconsistent values then you're gonna have to figure out and troubleshoot what's going on there. Uh, something is loose, something is not tensioned properly or what's going on. But if you do not uh, get this value correct, so you go back, you reset the E steps to stock value and repeat the whole process again, put in the new number and repeat the whole process again and see that your, your E steps are, number is coming, coming out consistently. With that said, we have successfully completed number six, the calibration of E steps. Uh, you also wanna do flow rate at this point and there's I'm not gonna make a video about flow rate there's a ton of videos out there you can just look it up internet search what it does is you just measuring whether uh, the flow of the machine is if you're saying it's 100% it is actually 100% it's not more or less uh, which is more to do with the dimensional accuracy of your prints and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slice my first file which is gonna be a benchy and I'm gonna see how that prints. But for th for this part of the video, number six, uh, we're gonna call it a success. And I'll see you in the next part.